I was very aware, I tried to be very aware of moments when I thought, ah, oh, that's a Colin Baker moment, or that's a Peter Davidson moment, or, you know, Patrick Troughton, or, or John Pertwee moment, you know what I mean, or Tom Baker moment. And when I had, you know, there was only fleeting ones in each story, perhaps, but I just try and, 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 and um, concentrate in, that, in my brain when I was doing it, so that but there'd be a, a touch, because I loved the idea that I was all of them. You know, I wasn't just me, Sylvester McCoy, Doctor Who, but I was the seventh one with all those six other bits of it. And I'd quite like to bring them. And so, in a way, I suppose if, if it had carried on and on and on, I would have quite enjoyed, uh, you know, exploring all those areas. Not doing, not going, I'm, you know, John Pertwee, not that way, not in that sense, just the essence of them. So, yeah. there we are, we're in Horsington Hill. And, and this, that, this was the last one we made, wasn't it? It was indeed. This was the final one. This yeah. is when we actually ended the series. We walked off into the sunset. Yes, no, we didn't know we were walking into the sunset. No, no you no, didn't know. We had a laugh, didn't we? It we laughed. Laugh. But then the, 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 the one most brilliant moment where you did lose your temper, in fact the only time where you did lose it badly was during Grace's show in the galaxy. And we, do you remember we were in the car park in the tent? Oh, right, yes. And somebody was, somebody heat, was yeah. reading in lines to be a voiceover later on, to be dubbed over. And they hadn't got the script that we'd been working with in rehearsals. And they kept doing it wrong and again yeah. and again. And I've never actually seen anybody physically jump up and down with rage before. <laughs> you, took your, you went like this, you took your hat off and you just went... Did they have that on film? I don't think they did. It would have been rather marvellous yes. if they had. <laughs> but then it was good because it was all over. And I, remember, I was sitting next to JNT and we just went... <laughs> that was brilliant. I feel that there was a tremendous rapport between the Doctor and Ace and Sophie and, and Sylve. And I think that shines, that, that shows. And yet, there is a character that does have enormous depth, um, that does have uh, lots of dramatic possibilities, some of which we explored, some of which we didn't get round to exploring. I mean, my friends would sort of say, oh yeah, Doctor Who's con companion just screams and twists Queen? her ankle in quarries and wears high heels and you know and uh, short skirts and things yeah it's and a sad thing you didn't do any of that really <laughs> no. oh well and it was great because I, I retained the kind of toughness but I think that was that was partly to do with you actually because I think you were very generous in allowing my character to develop I don't think you know I don't think that would would have happened unless you'd been well un under other doctors on, on <laughs> well not, <laughs> not I, I don't know really because I don't know the other doctors but yeah. I think you know, it was more all credit to you that you were willing to let me have some of the story. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. I thought if you, if I could somehow not have to learn all those gobbledygook <laughs> lines about scientific higgly piggly stuff, which I always found brain damaging, I, I could turn to you and say, "What is?" Ex well, I could start it off and then say to you, "As I did," and then you, you so actually I had to come up with all the gobbledygook. Yeah, and you used to be able to remember your lines before that. And then before afterwards, I met you. Oh yeah, before you got into the gobbledygook. And then when you got into the gobbledygook, you would, became exactly like me. That's true, isn't Brain it? Because you had those remember. scripts in your pockets. Yes. And at first, I was very goody goody and I'd done all my homework. And you used to and know my lines? lines. And you used to know, I used to know you everybody's cues. You used to be able to speak English as well once. <laughs> I knew everybody's <laughs> cues, I knew everything. I know. And then all of a sudden, I got amnesia. Yep. And I didn't know nothing. By nothing, the end. you had to rely on my nothing. pockets. Yes, I was just digging in your pockets. What comes next? I wonder if the JNT know that it was the end when he did because they, they gave I us I don't that, know. They gave us that um We'll have to ask him. Yeah. Uh, speech. You remember it was yeah. rewritten? Yes, the the cup of tea and the tea's getting Somewhere cold. Oh where the tea's getting yeah. cold. Which was it had great. a finality. I mean it didn't it? I think they must have known. Although they didn't tell us for a bit no. afterwards, did they? I mean we, we Well you know. told me. When? Not then, that day? No, no. No, no, it was you told me um It was later. It was later. I, I really can genuinely say I didn't, I'd never heard the word cancellation and I wish I had because I think I might have reacted more instantly and felt more awful. But, but what actually happened to me was that there was a slow realisation that oh my god, you know, it's not coming back. Um, and um, that's kind of even worse, really. I'd rather have been confronted. I'd rather have been told, you know, we're, we're hitting it on the head and, and it's not going to come back in the, in the foreseeable future. Whereas uh, the, the way it's worked out, it's actually been more painful for me because it's been a kind of dawning realisation that I may 
go down in history as the person who killed off Doctor Who. Very enjoyable job, and um, we had a laugh. And it's a shame, I think, <laughs> I felt that it was a shame that we never got to actually round it off, yeah. you know, that we just walked off into the bushes at the end. But